Hi, and welcome to episode 16 of Understanding Dark Table. We'll call this the Douglas Adams Memorial episode, I think, because this, my friends, is Masks Part 4 of the trilogy. Uh, what happened was I was editing episode 13 and thought to myself, oh, I should have mentioned such and such. I'll do that in episode 14. And then as I was editing episode 14, I thought, oh, I didn't mention that thing. And now there's this other thing. Oh, well, I'll do it in episode 15. And of course, I didn't do it in episode 15 <laughs> either. So this is going to be nine extra tips for using masks. So let's get into it. Number one is control click to add a node to an existing mask. So if we look at the mask that I've drawn here, if I suddenly decided, oh, you know what, I need an extra node right here, I can hold the control key down, click, and now I've got an extra node added to my path. Number two, is if I then decide, you know what, I've got an extra node in this path that I just don't need. I can simply right click on the node itself and that will remove just that particular node. Number three, right click on any other part of the path will remove the whole path. So if you right click on any line segment that will remove the whole mask, like so. Number four. I may have already mentioned this in a previous video, but just in case, shift and your mouse wheel will allow you to shrink or grow the feather around a mask. So if we turn on our mask visibility, shift and mouse wheel away from you, will shrink the feather, shift and mouse wheel towards you will expand the feather. Number five, likewise the control key and your mouse wheel will allow you to alter the opacity of the pixels inside the mask. Now you do need to understand this is not the same as using the opacity slider here under the blend mode. That does something different. This is changing the opacity of the actual pixels within the mask. Number six, you can convert the corner type for any node simply by holding your control key down and left clicking on that node. So this node down here is currently a soft corner. If I wanted to make that a hard corner, I would simply control, left click, and now that node is a hard corner. And I can also reverse that by control clicking it again to turn it back into a soft corner. Number seven, the eyedropper. Now this is probably self-explanatory. However, it is restricted just to parametric masks. And what I've got here is an image from a previous shoot. Let's suppose I wanted to desaturate the blues in the image. So I would go to my contrast and brightness and saturation, set some desaturation, go to a parametric mask, and I would start with the hue channel, activate my eyedropper, select some of the blue, and when you use the eyedropper, you get these little white marks on the input and output sliders of each channel that show you the values of those pixels as they appear in each of these channels. So we would go to the hue, and we would narrow in on that particular range, like so. Let's turn our mask on. That's not doing too bad a job of it. Let's just bring those in a little tighter. Let's just try a bit of chroma. 
Oh, there we go. Nice. So that has done a pretty good job of narrowing in, but the eyedropper just gives you the ability to select certain pixels based on their hue, their saturation, uh, whatever it is that you're, you're trying to target so that you can more quickly hone in on what you're looking for. Number eight is restricted edit mode. What this does is disable the ability to either move or change the size of the mask. So when you've drawn a mask, you can mouse inside the mask, left click and drag, and that will move the mask. Control Z to put it back. Also, if you are inside the mask with your mouse and you use your mouse wheel thinking that you are going to zoom in on the image, guess what? You're not. You've simply resized the mask. So what we can do is hold down the control key and left click once on the edit mask button and that will enter restricted edit mode. Now if I left click and drag inside the mask, the mask will not move and if I am inside the mask and I use my mouse wheel instead of changing the size of the mask it will actually zoom in on the image which is far more helpful because now we can go in and we can actually fine-tune the placement of our nodes if that's what we wanted to do which is a lot easier to do when you're zoomed in than when you're out at full view so that is restricted edit mode sadly there is no visual indicator in the UI to let you know that you're actually in restricted edit mode. You simply have to try it with your mouse to see which mode you're in, which is a little bit of an oversight, but at least you're aware of it. Number nine is the ability to temporarily turn off the mask so that you can see your image prior to the mask having been added and it's this little eye icon down beside the mask blur slider so if we turn on our mask visibility we can see that is our current mask and what it's doing is applying monochrome processing to poly here ideally i would have inverted that so that the background was monochrome and she was in color same thing in reverse so if we wanted to see the image as it was originally we could simply click the eye icon and now the output of the monochrome module is being applied to all pixels in the image and our mask has been disabled and we can simply re-enable it like so now after the process of recording the last three or now four videos of how to use masks in Darktable, I thought to myself, I wonder if I could recolor the car using a combination of drawn and parametric masks. So I went back to this image. Now, admittedly, the color of the car in this image is low hanging fruit. It's a pretty easy target because that blue is fairly conspicuous. But what I did was I created a duplicate of my XMP and then went ahead and ended up with that, which I think is pretty damn cool. If we look at our masks manager, what I've got is this mask, which picks up all of the front end of the car. This one, which grabs that little bit of paintwork down between Tammy's legs. That one, which grabs all of the rear end of the vehicle and then this little mask in here which was just there was a little bit of her t-shirt that was picking up some reflected blue off the bonnet of the car so using those four drawn masks i was able to create a fairly complex mask i then used the channel mixer and was able to recolor the car without recoloring any other part of the image 
So that's before and after. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I wrote about this on my photography blog at brucewilliamsphotography.com and I'll put the link down below if anyone wants to go and check that out. Also, a couple of weeks ago, I got an email from a guy called Steve Chasey who wanted to let Windows users know of an application called Fast Stone Image View. Now, in episode one of this series, I mentioned Rapid Photo Downloader for Linux, which is a great tool for importing your photos. It'll allow you to rename files on the fly and things like that. And Steve just wanted to let you know about Image View, which does a very similar thing for Windows. I'm not sure if Rapid Photo Downloader is available for Windows. I don't think that it is. So I'll find a link for Fast Stone Image View and I'll put that down below in the show notes as well. So if anyone's looking for something like that for Windows, which will allow you to rename your images on import, go and check it out. Alrighty, I think we're done with masks now. <laughs> So uh, that will do it for this one and uh, I'll see you in the next one.